This is an example of one of the many lectures provided with the Chassis Lab system. This particular lecture is designed to engage the class in some critical thinking. Unless you've driven an electric vehicle, you may not have considered what would happen if you decided to drive away while the vehicle's plugged in. Guide students through the need for a protective circuit and show them how to do many of the items that are required to wire an EV. This lab is designed to happen after the circuit watts and wire lecture. Additionally, it is one of the exercises we provide to instruct the student in proper wire selection, proper termination, proper wire crimping, the proper soldering, use of shrink tubing, teamwork, and following instructions. Also, reading a very simple wiring schematic. It should be noted that the chassis lab comes complete with all the wires terminated and labeled for proper installation. One of the reasons for this is to eliminate termination errors when students are learning to assemble wiring looms. An example occurred to me a few years ago when I had a student do a wonderful job terminating and installing shrink tubing on a complex wiring loom. When we installed the loom, nothing worked. It looked good, but no connectivity. No one had told the student to strip the installation insulation off the wire prior to crimping the terminals onto the wire. So review the drawing in the next page. Solicit some ideas before accepting solutions. Sometimes new students jump to solution prior to defining the problem and documenting the goals. It's an important thing that we try to encourage. Let's decide what we're going to do and think about it before we jump into it. So what do we want to happen when the vehicle is plugged in? Or what do we want not to happen? Don't be alarmed with the apparent complexity of this drawing. Chassis Lab provides the connections to interface with all the required circuits. But this drawing does contain some good discussion points. Notice at the bottom, the wire coming from Terminal 1 terminates at a switch under the letters NO. NO is for normally open. All switches are either NO or NC for normally open or normally closed. It is critical to use them correctly. Notice that the coil shown by the squiggly line is controlled by the key switch. Providing 12 volts to this switch activates the coil, which will close the switch and connect the wire one with a positive side of the traction battery, which in this diagram is labeled the main battery pack. Just above number one and numbers 13 are numbers 13 and six, two wires that terminate at a solenoid. A kind of solenoid is just a contactor and this one is the main contactor and it is controlled by the AC inverter or AC controller. The traction battery or pack negative is connected directly to the controller at B minus. It should also be noted that the drawing is designed for readability and the numbered wires are part of the 35 pin connector that attaches to the controller where the arrow points to the 35 pin connector just above B minus on the controller. There's much to learn about this drawing and you'll have an opportunity all in good time. So what's typical key switch activity? When the key switch is closed or on, certain predictable activities should occur. In our case, we will illuminate a green light and sound a buzzer when the key is on and the vehicle is not plugged in. If the vehicle is plugged in, we will activate a blinking red light and deactivate the key switch functionality. Knowing your components help too. Sometimes the onboard charger will provide a 12 volt circuit to control the relay when it's plugged in. Otherwise, we use a transformer set to auto detect 120 to 240 volts AC and provide the 12 volt output to activate a 12 volt relay, which we use to control our key switch circuit. Fortunately, Chassis Lab will provide all the wiring solutions and all the required components. We will even provide you a pre-made wire harness to prove everything works. Your job is to get the students to cut, terminate, and solder, which is optional, the wire, and then attach everything in the provided carrying case. There's your circuit. It's very simple. If you use color-coded wires, it'll help with simplicity. It's a fun, and the teams will actually compete. Competition is good, and it sets the bar for success. 
the winner does it correctly with the proper termination and it works the first time. Winner is definitely not the fastest. The first team to test has never gotten it right the first time. Take a look at our video that we provide of a recent training class with 12 instructors. There's your bill of materials. We hope you have fun building your circuit and it's important that you set the tone. Students should learn to do it correctly. Cut the proper lengths of wire and use the proper termination and install them correctly. If resources are scarce, students can use wire from previous attempts or the master set from Chassis Lab. I've also used this device as a troubleshooting platform where I've made incorrect connections and had students troubleshoot the result. It's been interesting to see how well they do with that. If they understand how things work, they can solve the problems pretty quickly. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction. Again, this is just one of many lectures and lab experiments that we provide with Chassis Lab.